So my name's Jono. Um, this is my website. Uh, I studied uh, design media arts at UCLA. And um, as I was kind of thinking about this opportunity that, that Colin gave me to talk here, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I, I used to study. Like, that, that feels like so long ago. Um, and so I remembered when I was a student seeing artists, I was interested, like, how does an artist that I thought was successful um, get to where they are? And this kind of brought me on this path to try to look at everything that I've made since I graduated uh, in 2008. So I hope uh, with your guys' permission, we can indulge and look at every project I've made uh, since 2008. Um, before I get into that, though, I just want to make sure everybody is aware of this piece of software that I use a lot. It's called Processing. Has anybody heard of it? I see some nods. Um, basically, th this is the site. Um, it's a it's software where you can um, uh, to minimize. Uh, you you write scripts uh, and you you kind of tell rules and then you hit a play button and it executes those rules as code. Um, and it and it's programming kind of veered towards uh, a visual output. So I can write all this stuff and then I hit play, and then it renders out um, this little like image that I made. Um, so that's what processing is. I, I use it a lot, so I'm just going to reference it quite a bit. Um, so yeah, uh, let's take a walk down memory lane. <coughs> 2008, uh, I made this uh, pamphlet for my mom. She did a, uh, a like a, an art exhibition at Cal um, that was about painters in Okinawa. Um, that was really fun. Uh, I did a data visualization for this website called Space Collective uh, that was trying to talk about the future of everything. Um, I was part of a rebrand at UCLA's Design Media Arts. Uh, so I did a lot of photography work, but I also did a lot of the templating and um, layouts for you know letterheads and all that like fun stuff that you get when you like apply and stuff like that. Um, at the time, I had a girlfriend. I would make posters for her. Um, I, I worked at a, um, a perfume uh, manufacturing company in Malibu uh, for a summer. And I had to do these chemical etchings to get the logo on the bottles. It's this, like, um, this, this little like orange thing. Um, yeah, it was not fun. Um, I also worked with friends. I started this uh, VJ group called Collabo in Los Angeles, and we were around for two years. Uh, we did a lot of local shows, um, and we did one show that was outside of LA. Um, so this was the website. This is an example video or a screenshot from the video that I um, did that we, we use as content in, in the show. Um, and that kind of process got me really interested in making videos in general. So this is like a one minute hello of uh, Marina Del Rey in Los Angeles. Um, and I worked with filmmakers. Um, this was one of my friends. He had a, sh a movie that required a prop that was like candy wrappers. So because I went to graphic design school, I was like, oh, I could design that for you. Like, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's what they look like. Um, and then kind of towards the end of 2008 and at the beginning of 2009, I got accepted to this residency in Argentina. Um, and I lived for three months in Buenos Aires. Um, and we, the, the group from LA that went, uh, was like half Argentinians, half people from Angelinos. Um, and we lived in this co-working space and we set up internet and electricity. Um, so I had a blog that I kept thoughts on. I also started to get really into processing in this time. Uh, this is like a computer vision pro uh, application that I made. Um, I also entered some poster competitions. I was really bad at graphic design in 2009. Um, <laughs> I did some mural work. Um, I did graffiti stenciling. This is a digital of it. I didn't have a photo of it. Uh, I made some designs for friends' t-shirts. Um, and I helped make the website for this uh, organization, this nonprofit, which was a it was a Wikipedia or Wikimedia site, and it was kind of like this Creative Commons thing. Um, and then the end of this residency, we had uh, an art exhibition 
So this is the layout of, I was the curator for this exhibition. So this is the layout of the, of the space. This is the logo of the show. Um, and then after that, I was kind of burnt out from partying um, and living abroad. So I came back to Los Angeles and um, started freelancing. Um, and so to do that, you know, you have to work on your portfolio. Uh, so this was like a piece that I made that I was just like trying to, I don't, I don't really know, really. Um, <laughs> it was about avocados. I really liked avocados. Um, this is a, another processing application. That was like a birthday card for my friend Skylar. Um, <coughs> and freelancing, I got my first gig from an old professor. I did a data visualization um, that was published, and this was about kind of the diversity in different book fair events. Um, so, yeah, I worked on this for like three months and was super proud of it. Um, and then that kind of led to other kind of school-related projects. So this is a poster for one of the talks, or for one of the um, undergrad shows. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I studied design, but I really was interested in this type of stuff in kind of like um, analog art. So I still do acrylic painting occasionally. So this is one of those pieces. Um, and I was continuing to do these processing computer vision sketches. So this is a music video that I, let not like commissioned or anything, that I, I was just like, I love this song. Like, I'm going to dance in front of this song. Um, and then, um, yeah, as freelancing, I started to do more kind of freelance type work, doing like corporate websites, hanging out, video chatting with my girlfriend. Sorry, I'm in the same pose. Um, uh, yeah, doing, doing pitches and briefs. Uh, so this was for like a fashion label. Um, this was for USC's like business school. They needed this chat client. So I started doing that. Started to get into more programming. Uh, I did this website for a friend's uh, clothing line. Uh, this is a thank you card for coming to my birthday party. Uh, this is my business card along with like the three other freelancers that I worked with. Um, and kind of after a year of freelancing, I was starting to feel burnt out and wanted a new space to kind of make and not feel the pressure of trying to have to make money. Um, so I applied to this program, Fabrica. This is my application that I sent in. Um, and I got to start to work on things that, you know, I, I didn't have to pay, I didn't have to worry about money, I had like food and shelter um, covered and a studio and a hundred other really interesting um, artists and designers and practitioners that were all from around the world. Uh, and this program's in Italy, it's right outside of Venice. Um, it's super cool, it's for people only under 25. So if you're under 25, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, so one of the first projects that I did was I made a blog that let me and the other students um, put in like what music we liked that we found online. Um, <coughs> but I was still kind of doing freelance work uh, because can you really ever quit freelance work when you start doing it? So I did this like uh, wedding pamphlet and design site for this company that makes videos <laughs> at weddings. Um, and I did a uh, user flow, kind of like UX design for this uh, company called Minogi. Um, and, but I, I got a lot of time to spend about, you know, thinking about what I wanted to do and how that could all um, fit together. So I did a lot of sketching and made a lot of more of these processing applications. This one was one of the first staff picks on Vimeo. Um, which made me feel like really, this was before staff picks were like actually like a big fucking deal. <laughs> um, like this video maybe has like 5,000 views even though it's a staff pick because uh, it's like one of the first staff picks ever. Um, and so I would continue to do that and I, and I still did it for my friends that were kind of keeping up with this VJ collective. So this is um, an application that I made for a hard music festival. It's kind of like audio reactive stuff. Here's some other items from that, um, and it turned into <coughs> a sculptural piece that uh, was kind of like projection mapped in, uh, on in, in the crowd, um, so people were kind of like close to the content instead of actually like, oh, here's a stage, like people partying, this is awesome. Um, yeah, and so I, I'd continued, I, I'd as a graphic designer, I never wanted to leave print, so I still do some like print stuff. 
Um, even more processing applications. More processing applications. Even more processing applications. Um, and some installation work. This was a photo booth um, that the VJ group that we that I was a part of we made for the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles. Um, it's kind of like your run in the middle of photo booth, but it's by designer, so it kind of looked cool, I guess. Uh, made some business cards for friend. Um, <coughs> freelance Republic was this like group of me and my freelance friends, so we made this like holiday video one year. I was like, hey, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that's an image. I made a get well card soon. Get well soon card for a friend. Um, I, this is a website that um, catalogs via Twitter every public bathroom I've been to. So I take a photo and I rate the toilet. Uh, I did this for about a year. Um, uh, and then kind of at the, <coughs> in, in the middle of 2010, I broke up with my girlfriend and was like pretty depressed. So I went back to print work. Um, kind of like simple, small things, not taking on bigger projects. And uh, yeah, I got, um, I got accepted to this program, Fabrica. So all the way back, right, I applied. We fast forward a year, I got, um, I got a trial, uh, which is like a two week period where you get to come and try out. Um, and so I did this data visualization for, um, at the time the Haiti, the earthquake in Haiti had just hit and the, um, destruction was pretty massive and so this was a data visualization kind of like each one of these little uh, kind of strips was like a bandage um, and the bandage size and length was based on for who like a country or um, organization that had contributed money to Haiti to help kind of restructure um, so this was a processing application that updated live um, <coughs> and that kind of it's cool because you get to work on your own work while you're there, and they give you data sets and briefs that are really kind of compelling. Um, but then you also are asked to do advertising work for them. So this this program, Fabrica, is run by United Colors of Benetton. Um, so I helped do the web development uh, for this site called It's My Time, which is a contest um, to like hire the next model for United Colors of Benetton. So these are like all these people, these are the winners, but like hundreds of thousands of people entered. Um, yeah, uh, continued making processing sketches. Um, at the time when I got accepted to Fabrica, I was also interviewing at other places and I interviewed at Anthropology um, in Philadelphia. Uh, so this is like, they ask you to do a job, like a project before you get hired. So this was like a lookbook style thing that I had put together. Um, uh, I don't know what that is. Um, my parents own a restaurant in the Bay Area here in Berkeley. <coughs> so I was like, in the Bay Area, wait a second, we're in the Bay Area right now. Um, so I helped do the redesign for their restaurant. Um, I still made paintings. This is a birthday present to a friend of mine. Um, and then, I, as you guys, I'm sure, have, like, you get excited about different festivals and other things, and one that I had always wanted to go to was called OFF, O-F-F-F, -F -F. Um, and they had a call to enter your own piece that was called Nostalgia for the Past Future. So this was some, like, idea that I had for it, and then this was the actual piece that I submitted, and then was added as part of the exhibition at OFFF. -F -F. Um, more processing sketches. Uh, you, you can tell these are starting to get more complicated also. Um, yeah, just an interesting tidbit. Uh, this is a poster I made for a friend of mine's party. Um, I started, <coughs> after going to Fabrica, I, I felt a lot more comfortable um, programming. I, I had done a lot more programming for freelance work, but then I also worked on a project that had a lot of people using it, uh, learning the back end and doing front end stuff. So I started releasing my own JavaScript libraries. Uh, this is a library, a jQuery library, that you take a set of a grid of elements and it fades them diagonally in or out. Um, <coughs> this was, I don't really remember what that is. Uh, this is a poster for spring. This is a poster for summer. I didn't make it to fall or winter. <laughs> 
Um, this is that, that restaurant that my parents own. It's a pizzeria. I made a video, a marketing video for them. Um, more processing sketches, more processing sketches. Um, and those processing sketches led me to apply to this uh, workshop at iBeam um, in New York City. Uh, it was a week-long master class on uh, visual music is what it's called. And visual music is like writing real-time software that reacts or has some kind of like narrative influence by the audio. Um, and it was really cool because it was backed by Ghostly, the record label that um, a lot of really cool electronic artists are on. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and this actually turned into something later that you're going to see. Um, <coughs> yeah, I did some projection work with a friend. We like did analog projection work for, for VJing um, where we'd like use like weird crystals and stuff and stick them in front of the projector and do we'd move the projector you know and you get a different effect that you can't replicate in software and it's you know it was pretty stupid but it it's a good it's good to mix it up um so the the last month that I was at Fabrica it was in August and if you're if you've been to Italy or you're Italian you know August is totally shut down so I just hung out on the beach and took pictures And then uh, came back and went to Ars Electronica, which is an amazing uh, media arts festival in um, Linz. Is it in Linz? It's in Austria. Um, and this is a data visualization of uh, kind of each color represents what activity I was doing for the weekend that I was there. Um, pretty sure purple is sleeping because there's a lot of purple. Um, and then after that, I went to a workshop at CIID, which is the Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design. I had a friend that was studying there, and I uh, kind of just got to see what they were up to. Um, I can't even remember what I made, but this is the photo that I have from that workshop. Um, <coughs> and so that project that I worked on uh, the at iBeam um, turned into what would be um, a job offer at Google. So after leaving Italy, I came back to the Bay Area, um, and my first thing that I did at Google was make a name tag for myself, because I hated the name tags that they had there. Um, and kind of the timing was weird, but I released my Fabrica pr project after I had gotten back from Google. So this is a Mac application that is all of that, all those videos of me like moving around and drawing on top that all those processing sketches kind of ultimately turned into this Mac application, which you can still download for free. Um, <coughs> I redid that OFFF poster, but in the web. Um, and then Google kind of brought me to these really commercial, um, highly visible projects. So I got to work on this music video for um, Danger Mouse and Daniel Lupi's uh, new album. That was just the... Um, like uh, splash screen before the project was done. <coughs> and, um, but I would still continue messing around with programming. So these are some experiments. Um, yeah, we worked on a lot of, a lot of stuff. <laughs> There's just a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to start to fly by a lot of this stuff. Um, but yeah, this is a JavaScript library. Uh, I did animations for Google I.O. in 2011. Um, this is that music video. Uh, it's a it's a website, even though it's called a music video. Super weird. Um, the main thing, while I was at Google, I was part of a marketing team that was pushing this technology called WebGL, and that technology is part of the browser, and it allows you to do three real-time 3D content. So a lot of the projects that I was doing at Google had some relation to trying to do real-time 3D content on the web. Um, it's another JavaScript library. Uh, these are that OFFF contest, but as postcards. Um, this is another JavaScript library to do physics in the browser. Uh, this was a project that Google commissioned the Tate Modern uh, to hold. It's uh, Tate Modern had a, uh, they reopened their Surrealist exhibit <coughs> as a permanent collection, and they wanted something contemporary that the audience could kind of interact with and had, uh, you know, asked Google, as, hey, is there, you guys are pretty modern. Is there anything you could do? Um, so we came up with this like exquisite corpse style animation um, tool 
which is a, a website that anybody could use called This Exquisite Forest. Um, and then I finally redesigned my website after I graduated. So this is four years later. And I was like, well, I'm like made it. I'm like a real something. <laughs> I, I, I need to look like way more professional, not like I just graduated. Um, so that's what that looked like. Um, and still working with friends. This is a friends logo. They're a dance company here in the Bay Area. Um, this is a website visualizing every star that has been cataloged in existence. Um, it's still up. It's really cool. I uh, made an Instagram web, uh, a feed of my girlfriend's Insta Instagram account so that she could show it off. Um, this is another Google project. <coughs> uh, these, I, I've been working with this group, Secret 7-inch. Um, they sell like small release vinyl um, to to anybody, but the money goes to a nonprofit every year. So this year, uh, or not this year, that year was for Jesse Ware. Um, uh, I made my own typeface. Well, I started making my own typeface. Um, this poster. Uh, this is a JavaScript library called 2JS. Um, yeah, we can talk. Well, we can talk about it later if you guys want. Uh, this is a music video through Google for Arcade Fire. Um, it's like a real-time music video. Um, this was a mask I made for Halloween. <laughs> this is an animated YouTube GIF that I made for <laughs> uploading. When you upload a video, this is what plays. Uh, I think I don't think it is there anymore. Um, there's a site called Anatype where coders can animate uh, typography. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my friend's Australian, and they had a party. Um, <coughs> and so after, this is now 2013, um, I, I started getting calls to start speaking. I had kind of like amassed a d amount of work that was like, hey, the stuff you do is kind of cool. You should talk about it. Um, so this was the first talk that I gave that was in conjunction with a workshop in Tokyo. Um, it's called Super Flying Tokyo. And uh, that was pretty cool. Um, this is the second year of Secret 7-inch. This was for Lord. Uh, this is a site called Patatap that I made. Uh, we won't show it. Um, uh, one of the last projects that I worked on at Google was this project called A Numbered Sparks, <coughs> which was a installation, a proje projection map installation at the TED conference in Vancouver. Um, this is my friend's bachelor party t-shirt. Uh, this poster, birthday party. Um, one of the last thing that I worked on at Google was the rollout of Google Cardboard at Google I.O. Um, kind of VR for everybody. Um, more kind of weird screenshots. Uh, this was uh, commissioned by Vice and HTC. Okay, we're almost done. Um, Anyways, there's a lot of work. Uh, this is now 2000, this is the end of 2015. Colin was also in this exhibition. Um, these were like animated GIFs that were posted on Market Street. Uh, this is a mural that I made in my apartment. Um, this is uh, Secret 7 Inch third year for St. Vincent. Uh, it's my brother and me hanging out. Uh, this is for another talk that I did in Boston. Random, p p uh, random T-shirt. Uh, birth, another birthday. These birthdays like don't go away. It's really, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, uh, this is another JavaScript library. <coughs> this is a music video that I did, not through Google, um, for the artist Kimbra. You might know her from that song, "Somebody I Used to Know" with Gautier. Um, and then I left Google uh, at in the middle of last year, and I joined this company called Verse, um, which makes films for virtual reality. Um, this is this is the site. This is what they look like. I'm not going to show you like the full-on VR thing, but basically we make films that are on a smat wrapped spherical grid, so you can drag and you can look anywhere, and it kind of gives you. Um, 
a perspective like you're in the scene. Uh, so I've been doing that. I just hit my year mark. That's kind of crazy. But we launched our video players uh, and our apps last year. Um, some swag for talks that I give. Um, gradients. Uh, to the sequel to Pata <laughs> The sequel to Patatab was this project called Typotone, where you could send messages to each other and hear your message as a song. <coughs> um, and I did uh, an illustration for The New Yorker last year um, that was about uh, machine learning and AI. That, that was the article. And so they, they came to ask me, whoa, we want to do a digital illustration that's like interactive. It'll be our first one. It's awesome. Um, and I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds really cool. I want to be that. I want to be that guy. Uh, and they're like, okay, great. Um, I don't know if you've seen New York Times has done one. It's called Snow Crash. I was like, oh yeah, I totally know that article. That article is awesome. Um, it's amazing. You want to do something like that? They were like, yeah, and we want it done tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. So we came up with this instead. Um, I made a clock. I feel like clocks for UX and UI designers are a bit like chairs for industrial designers. So I'm still working on mine. It's not, it's, yeah, I don't, it's not perfect. Um, yeah, holiday stuff, more, I'm still doing random processing sketches. Um, this is the most recent Secret 7 Inch. This was f for churches. I think that's how you pronounce the name. Um, still doing print work. This is a generative um, record label that I worked with um, Grammatic to do. I don't know if you guys, he's a really cool um, artist. Um, and then I made a birthday invitation for my 30th birthday because that's happening in two weeks. So that's every project uh, since I graduated. Um, <coughs> and with the, the little time that I have left, I kind of want to ask like, okay, why, why did we just go through all that? And if it felt like a long time right now, well, it's been a really long time because I lived all of it. <laughs> um, so let's see. These are all the projects, right? <coughs> um, and we, I, st I started looking at this, and I was like, yeah, you know, I, I actually, it's, it's a lot, but it's a lot less than maybe I thought I would have made. Uh, like, when I was graduating, I was like, yeah, I can make anything. I'm going to make everything. Um, nope, it's definitely these. These are the things that you made. Um, and then I started breaking it down. So we have like commercial and non-commercial work, right? I'm pretty happy that this is split 50-50 um, because, you know, as you know, you need to pay the bills. And I, I've found that over the course of time, I have like high uh, cost of living that I need to keep up. Um, and then, <coughs> yeah, and then I, s I wanted to look at it by year. So these are the different years. For some reason, 2009 and 2010, I was like the most quote unquote prolific. Um, and I was like, wow, I wonder why that is. And then I, was, I realized, I was like, well, wait a second. If we look at those projects, these bigger projects, those projects take a lot longer. So these, these ones like this and this and this and this, these are all around a year that I was working on them. All of these ones up here, which are, you know, the initial ones, that was like a week two weeks, a day, you know, it's like a sketch. This one, 2JS, <coughs> this library that I maintain, I've been working on it for four years. That's kind of depressing. <laughs> um, but then I started to think like, well, is there, like these, these are kind of interesting things. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have put this project to be like my f most favorite project. Like these are, the, these are the projects that I find most interesting, most impactful for me, right? And then I started to think a little bit more. I was like, wait a second. But this is actually how people see me. And I was, I was like, well, these are, these are really different. I kind of found that interesting. Um, and then I started to think, like, well, you know, in life, it's not a dichotomy of, like, oh, there's, you know, A and B. There's, like, all this gray space in between. Uh, in the web, we call that tagging, right? So I started to tag the data. <coughs> And so, you know, as I started, like every good graphic design student does, I'm like, okay, what are the concentrations? Well, I still have I've got a lot of type work, does some illustration work, there's some generative stuff, photography is up here at the top, it's kind of hard to see. 
Then I was like, well, but and then also the format. I'm a pretty technical person too, so I was like, okay, what are the different formats? I have moving images, interactive, and static. I still mo make the most static stuff. It's not print, it's still digital, but it's static images. Like that's the thing that I make the most. <coughs> and I think it's probably because it's the easiest or like fastest thing that you can make. Um, and then finally I started to break it down in terms of relationships. It's like, why did I make these things? Like why, I thought I could make anything, but I made specific things. And usually it's because, you know, it's a, it's a close thing. It's a friend, it's family, it's a personal thing. <coughs> But there's also, you know, I get a speaking engagement. I work at, um, you know, I, I graduated from school, so they gave me a lot of opportunities. I was employed at a place for a long time. And I think the biggest takeaway that I had here was like, oh, I'm actually a lot more selfish than I thought I was. <laughs> like personal is, w is way <laughs> bigger than any of the other things. Um, and so I wanna leave you guys with, you know, as you're about to graduate, you have tons of opportunity and and worlds ahead of you and you know I, I look forward to seeing in eight years the the types of projects that you get to make so thank you